Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Unplugged Woodworkers podcast. So what have I been up to? Um, I only got home um, late Monday night. Um, I have been getting over a cold. So I've been quite sniffly and whatever else. Um, had some migraines so I haven't done a great deal but I did make a start on a, um, a cassette tape table. <laughs> I'm not a, um, I'm not very fond of making these anymore because I've just made so many of them and it's just I, I really don't enjoy doing them now. But obviously the you know I still get the odd sale, um, so you know who am I to you know to to knock the money back? Should I say? But um, they are very cool once they're made. You know, just to look at one, they are very cool. That's just my opinion. Um, so, I've also uh, brought out a video, so while I was making them, um, obviously um, the top section of the tape, it's actually got four little holes on either side, and those were uh, originally for the pins to go through on an original cassette tape. Um, so, with these holes, these holes are like um, one inch and a quarter, yes, the one inch and a quarter. So these holes have actually got internal chamfers on them. So I did do a video where I showed how I do with internal chamfers and that's just with an 8mm chisel. Um, and I basically just talk through it, um, you know, just basically what I'm doing, how I'm using it, um, you know, a couple of little tips and whatever else. Really simple process, but for anyone that's, you know, kind of got something like that to do ironically it was actually a question someone asked us a question um i think it may have been a couple of weeks ago now and it's ironic that i have actually just had to do them so i thought i would do a, a video on that so what caught my eye um so quite recently um i was flicking through instagram which i normally do um the instagram's just it's for woodwork and that's all it's for absolutely love it for that um as i've stated lots of times i'm a visual learner so you know instagram's great for that so shetland fine craft um he posted a a picture um he actually only posted two pictures which was a little bit disappointing or um well at least it was for me because i'm a as most people know who listen to us on a regular basis or, or followers know i'm a bit of a tool a, a tool a tool nerd um and i absolutely love me hand tools so this <laughs> this thing i'm going to call it a thing it's actually a chamfer plane but this is a very very first um western chamfer plane i've seen i've never ever seen a a western chamfer plane all the chamfer planes i've ever seen are japanese chamfer planes you know basically two pieces of um you know um wood shaped and um they've not usually got um bolts through them you know um you know so you can adjust them um they're quite cool actually like um i did actually fancy getting one um but i kind of um i don't really need one because the same again if anyone follows us you know i tend to do all this sort of thing freehand but um regardless of that this plane it's actually like a it's really weird. I didn't know what to make of it when I was first looking at it. Um, it's kind of a Bailey pattern chamfer plane. Um, and it, like first looking at it, it looks like someone's just got an angle grinder, kind of like took the the angle grinder about forty five degrees across the whole width <laughs> of uh, of this plane, and then kind of welded it further up. It's it's really weird looking. Um, as I, as I said, I've never ever seen one, never seen one, um, but according to um, the writing on the post, apparently they're very, very rare. I believe he picked it up for around about £18, um, it's in perfect work and order, um, in a charity shop, um, and he says in his post, it's not too bad considering they can go um, anywhere from £350 up to whatever silly money I, I surmise i think he dated it back to somewhere in the 18th century but i'll leave a link in the post i would hate if you if you like your your, your hand tools i would highly recommend you check it out as i said it's a first for me 
So today I thought I would go over grain direction. Um, since I was doing the holes or the all the chamfers on the the small holes um, a couple of days ago, I started thinking about grain directions and and whatever else you know. I don't feel it's talked about a lot, or at least I don't come across it a lot. And I think, I think the more you understand about grain direction and what's possible and what's not possible, it can like save you a lot of time. You know, it's it's just better all around for you to understand the piece of wood that you're working with. I know that sounds a bit um, geeky or a bit stupid to some people, but you know, in actual fact, it's you know it's it's pretty clever in a way. Um, you know, people have understood green direction for hundreds and hundreds of years you know especially um green woodwork as you know they obviously they've got to the you know that that's kind of their bread and butter if you will you know when this when they're splitting um pieces of wood or logs roller you know they, they fully understand that well the people that have been doing it for a long long time do anyway so the the green direction it's it's a, it can be a really funny one, and it's not always as it seems. Um, you know, when you get these these pieces of wood, um, you know you might you might have slabs of um, oak or or any other type of wood. You know, and some of them have these beautiful patterns. You know, they'll have you know swirling swirling pieces of wood and knots in them, and you know some of them um, have got splits in it and. You know, some sometimes the epoxy resin them, sometimes it puts um, dovetail um, buttons in them, and and whatever else. You know, and some of these um, yeah, grain directions are just beautiful. You know, they look like little um, hurricanes in the wood, if you will. You know, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> as some of you will know, these can be very, very problematic. Um, you know, to uh, to play or to work rather, you know, some of them can be re like a real pain in the bum. And as I said, nothing or rather, sometimes things don't like look as the, or seem as the look rather. Um, a good a good example of this was I done a video um, or rather a clip on Instagram. I believe it was on Instagram. Obviously, it'll be on Facebook as well. So, in the video, I'm actually edge planing some sapel. Um, I'm not sure if this was for one of the many benches I've made, one of the many room and workbenches I've made. It possibly could have been, it probably would have been. Um, and someone left a comment. I can't remember who left a comment. Um, I didn't. I didn't take it highly offensively but I did take it a little offensively if you will <clears throat> um it was kind of he was kind of it seemed as though he was talking down to us a little bit um that's just how I took it he might not have been but that's the way it come across to myself and basically I can't quite remember the comment but it was somewhere along the lines of like kind of look at the grain direction you know, you should be playing the other way, you're just going to get tear out, because I think I'd mentioned tear out in the piece, I don't know if I'd, I don't know even if I had a, um, took a picture of it, it might be even be in pictures, regardless of that, um, that's what the guy wrote, so in actual fact, um, the kind of, the grain looked like it was ru was running up um, towards the way I was playing, and so it kind of looked like I was Playing and into the grain, if you will, into rise and grain, which, if anyone you know anyone that that knows that's that's been woodworking for a while with hand tools and knows that you just don't do that because it'll create tear outs. Um, again, for anyone that doesn't know, tear out will be little tear, little, literally little tear out pockets, if you will, um, of wood. You know, it's very unsightly. Um, so yeah, you you kind of want to avoid that. So, as I said, it looked like I was playing an into it, uh, and that's why he commented what he commented. So, in actual fact, it was tearing out both ends, and even though it looked really bad, 
um, the way I was um, playing and it's, you know, visually it just didn't look right. It looked like I should have the board turned round. Um, in actual fact, it was actually worse, worse as a such a word, it was worse playing in the opposite direction. So I decided to go the lesser of the two evils um, and the way I was playing and was actually better and I was actually getting less tear out doing it that way. You know, so it just goes to show you, um, you know, things just aren't what they seem when you're looking at grain. Um, ironically, it happened it was not so long ago in Oak. Now, this doesn't typically happen a lot in Oak. Um, I work pretty much all the time with Oak. So, looking at it, Oak, I can see it's, you know, it might be going in a straight, um, a straight direction down down the board, happy days, I can normally play in, you know, ELA direction, it's not an issue, um, sometimes, obviously, when you're going down the, down the board, or all are looking down the board, uh, you can see it might be lifting, um, um, sometimes, you look down the board, it might be lifting, there might be a little bit of a knot, and on the, on the opposite side of the knot, it might be lifting very slightly, and you know it, it runs off straight so typically with that i can actually you know just playing down one direction i might get a little bit of um, tear out so with things like that i will try to basically get that so it's a glue up um a glue up edge roller you know so it's going to be hidden um but I, i'm digressing yeah so you do have things like that. So as I was saying, just recently it happened. It was it looked like the grain was rising. So I started playing and down, and obviously you know it was all well, and it got to the it got to where it was rising. Um, so technically, I should have been able to play, in and where it was rising, it shouldn't have really mattered because it was it was rising on a diagonal away from myself or, or away from the way I was playing. And so visually, you know, looking at it, it looked perfectly fine for me to play in, in that direction. But when I started doing it, I started getting tear out. And sometimes, you know, you do get things like that and I, and I look at it and it just baffles us, you know, because you can see the way the grain's running and it just, like, defies logic, or at least it defies my logic. You know, it shouldn't really be doing that, but it is what it is. You know, that's just an example of things don't always, you know, happen the way you think they're going to happen. Going back to um, the big slabs that I was talking about firstly... You know, these might have um, knots in them and they might have, um, you know, these beautiful swirling hurricane-like, um, you know, grain patterns in them. You know, different types of um, of wood. You know, I'm not just talking about oak. So, obviously this can be um, very problematic if you're planning. Um for an example, say we had a slab, um, it had these beautiful patterns, these, you know, some gnarly grain basically. Um, and we were flattening this slab, obviously, go across the grain um, diagonally. Although I have kind of started like not doing that as much, um, but anyway, um, the end process would be um, playing them with the grain or. Or the length of the board or the slab in this case um so obviously when when you start going with um the length that's where you start to get the problems so what i would typically do with this um i would kind of um go across the grain start going with the grain that's when I'll start getting the tear out. Obviously, that's that's when you you know you'll you'll find your problem areas. Um, so I'll try and get it you know close. You know, you know take all the, like um, the cross grain marks out. You know, and I start getting it close, close. Um, as what you can do, you can actually retract the blade. This does take quite a little bit of time, um, obviously because you're taking um, you know less of a shaving, but you can retract your blade, um, 
you know, so you're taking a really fine shave and and as what this does this actually like really minimizes um, the tear out but as I said it can take um, you know quite a bit of time alternatively this is something that I haven't done for a very very long time and I, I, to be honest with you I, I don't think I'd kind of do it in the future because I'm not a I'm not a massive fan of this type of plane and this was a this was a low angle jack plane and I believe my mother bought this for me um, many years ago um, as a birthday present or a Christmas present and this is a this is um, one of the um, the Lubin ones or the I, f I forget I have talked about these uh, the, this is like a Chinese plane um, very well made uh, you can actually get these from um, Workshop Heaven. I, f I totally forget the uh, the name of them now. The, anyway, the they're extremely well built, um, extremely well machined. I ain't I ain't got a problem with it. So, uh, I've you know the machining or, or whatever else. Absolutely great. I'd highly recommend any you know any models made by them. However, this plane, I don't know. I've just never uh, getting on with it. Um, you know, I, I, do, I don't even think it, it wouldn't make a difference if it was built, you know, by Lee Nielsen, you know, or or whatever. It's just I don't like this type of plane. And it's a, it's it's a jack plane. It's a low angle jack plane um, with a retractable mouth or a mouth that opens, uh, which can be pretty handy. Um, in essence, it's you know the ideas with it. it, it the do seem good. Obviously, it's got um, it came with three irons, um, and the irons are ground at um, you know different angles. Um, and so you've got like your low angle. Um, sorry, you've they're all they're all like sat at low angles, but you've got your regular twenty five degrees. Um, I think you had one at thirty two degrees. I could be wrong. And then I think you had one ground at 54 or 52 degrees, somewhere around there. Um, obviously, the, the three are, are designed for different things. But the last one, uh, the one that's, I'm guessing, yeah, about 52 degrees, that was kind of um, marketed as, you know, the blade that would, um, you know, basically help you out you know when you've got gnarly grain and i did try it and yeah it, it does it does actually work yeah but as i said i just never really got on with a plane this was many years ago so obviously now i'm a bit more yeah how, how to put it i've basically got a lot more hours into using hand tools and um you know planes in general you know i've you know i've spent a lot of time so I am a little bit more experienced than I was when I first got the plane all those years ago. So I kind of think it's it might be a little bit unfair of myself to kind of diss the plane, <laughs> diss the plane. But um, that's that's kind of an option. So what I what I'll tend to do um, after I've used the number four, what I've just explained before, I'll start talking about uh, the jack plane with the different irons. Once I've got it close, I'll get my cabinet scraper out. Um, so the cabinet scraper makes short work of it. So yeah, obviously, you don't get no tear out. The way I kind of sharpen my um, cabinet scraper, um, it does actually take a you know a decent shaving off. So you know it's it doesn't take forever. It's you know it, it's quicker than. It's quicker than getting your plane and taking a really light shaving off, you know, because I, I can take, I can hog quite a bit off uh, with a cabinet scraper. Um, after the cabinet scraper, um, I'll just go straight onto my card scraper. And that, that's pretty much my um, my method for gnarly grain if I'm, you know, flattening a slab or just um, face planing in general, you know, if I've got some awkward um, grain. So it's it's kind of a good idea as well. Um you know when you when you're selecting um you know pieces of timber for furniture, um I think it's you know it it does kind of start to become important I think the further into your journey uh, you go with woodwork and I mean there's a lot of things that I know now 
um, that I wish I had have kind of knew like years ago or things that I wish I had have taken more notice of. Um, obviously, I think, you know, grain um, is definitely like grain direction and, you know, reading the grain. And if you're able to kind of look at the grain, you know, and decipher what's what it holds, um, you know, you're just going to get a better piece of furniture. I mean, f for instance, um, when was it? It might have actually been nearly a year ago. I think there was. I think it was pretty close to Christmas, and there's a one of the old Diaz from along the street. <laughs> she come, she come knocking on me door, and she's like, "Oh hi!" I was like, "Oh hi!" She, um, she's, "You're a woodworker, aren't you?" It's like <laughs> everyone in the street knows I'm a woodworker. You know what? I, I woodwork in my back garden when the weather permits. Yeah, so I was like, oh yeah, it's just like um, he, one of the grandkids has been um, rocking backwards and forward on one of my chairs, and uh, you know the 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 one of the legs is snapped. Yeah, it's just is is anything you could do? So I says I says to her, I says oh, I says bring the bring the chair around, and I'll you know I'll have a look at the chair, and you know see what we can do. I says worst case scenario, I might just have to you know like um, do you and you um in your leg if that's possible um, as it happens the chair that she brought around it was just a rough frame um it basically a pull stud and you know it had like um four removable legs these removable legs were just bolted into place so you know it wasn't it wasn't too much of a big deal but when the when the when they've actually the fa I'm guessing it's a factory when the factory's actually done it, I don't know if there's been anyone checking the legs. I've never worked in a woodworking factory, but I would kind of guess or at least hope that you've got someone at least checking the material that's coming to make sure, especially for legs, you want to try and make sure the grain's pretty straight. You know, you, you want to be using like um, quarter sewn um, material if you can. You know, it's going to be yeah, some of the strongest and straightest material. If if the grain's straight, it's going to be really strong. It's really well suited for, um, you know, chair building and, and and other things. So, the leg, when I looked at it, it just it had like, it just basically split um with the grain. You know, it wasn't you know fractured or anything like that. It was, or is, is that the right word or splayed? You know, you know, you know, kind of when you snap a lolly stick, and you know, you get all the little splays off it. It wasn't like that. It was just like a, a straight. It probably better to say a fracture. It was like a like a clean, a really super clean fracture. So it literally gave way along the grain. Um, obviously, that grain, you know, it wasn't suited for a chair leg. You know, it shouldn't have been running out. It kind of ran out like halfway through, like halfway in the length of the leg, which is, you know, that's no good at all. I mean, you could, you could probably get away with it if it started running out really close to the bottom of the leg. I mean, like you know, a couple of inches from the bottom of the leg, it mightn't have been too much of an issue. Uh, obviously, depending on how much you know it's running out. Yeah, but this particular piece, when I'm looking back at it now, it was kind of from one edge to the other edge. So I don't think it would have made any difference if it had been closer to the, you know, closer to the bottom of the leg. I think it probably would have still happened. Um, so yeah, it was just a bad choice. So that, that's just you know one example. But the same could be said, you know, for the framework as well, because if you had a similar piece of wood for the framework. You know, if a child's on it and a child's rocking backwards and forwards, it is putting stress on the framework. So ideally, all all of your framework wants to be quite straight as well. It's it's going to be, um, you know, some some of the um, some of the strongest chairs you're going to get if it's straight. You've only got to look at like the likes of um, Windsor chairs, Welsh stick chairs. Um, what do you call that other chair? There's there's another chair I've just been... Is it a Jenny chair? I could be wrong here. I believe Christopher Schwartz has just re-released uh, an, another book. I'm sure it's called the Jenny chair. I've actually got the book. Um, 
it's a digital copy like so I can't quite get it at this moment in time but uh, it's quite a good book yeah, I'm sure it's called The Jenny Chair regardless The Jenny Chair as well as the Well Stick Chair as well as the um, the Windsor Chairs all of that material is split from logs you know so when you're splitting it from logs you you get what you get if you like um you know you, you select you're basically selecting you know the straightest of grains when you're splitting it will split with the grain so you can basically see what you're doing so when you're splitting it you know you know you, you basically know what you're getting you know that that's that piece of log that you've just split whether it be for a chair leg or whatever else you know that's like you know straight um and when you know it's straight you know it's strong and this is this is like a really good reason why you know a lot of these chairs you know have stood the test of times i mean them well stick chairs you know there's, there's 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 a lot of examples of them you know a couple of hundred years old it's the same with well um Windsor chairs as well there's a lot of examples of them you know still kicking around you know like 100 150 years 200 years old you know it's it's just a testament to to the strength of them i think i think one of the problems um with the with the welsh dick chairs um and the windsor chairs probably with the jenny chairs as well um I don't know the the correct name of them. Is it ladder back ladder back chairs? Um, basically, the the legs are um, you know the kind of round. Um, the back legs are round. Um, you use a draw knife and you kind of square them off. And obviously, you've got your lats in the back. Um, the seats uh, woven with um, hickory bark originally. I think it was, but obviously, other people use different things. So I think it's the same with with those chairs as well. So I think it's more the joints. I think that t- tends to be more of a problem. The joints give way after time. I mean, you know, if a joint gives way after 50 years or even 20 years, I mean, <laughs> it's not really a big deal, is it? I mean, well, you've got 20 years out of a chair. You know, clean the glue off, um, re-glue it, re-wedge it. You know, it's good for another 50, 20 years or whatever, you know. But I've, to me, knowledge, I think that's kind of, one of the problems with them so you know it's it's not a like i said if you know if if you've got like good grain you know it's it's going to be good and it's just kind of the joints um so as i said it's just a testament to you know the the correct um the correct selection of you know leg material and obviously you know you're working with a grain Obviously, it's kind of the same thing when you're bending um, materials as well. Kind of, I thought I'd mention this just while I'm still on the subject of chairs. Um, you know, like a continuous, um, a continuous arm Windsor chair, a be- beautiful chair. You know, same again, very strong. Yet they've still got a little bit of movement in them, which which I think is is quite cool. Um, but you know, it's the same again. It's um, the wood is the grain is straight you know you've got you've got crafts crafts um, persons who who know the wood you know the the know about grain direction and all the rest of it um and it is important it's exactly the same if you're going to be bending a piece of wood and you've got run out of grain which a lot of people already know this uh, when you start bending that piece of wood it's just where the grain lifts up it's just going to start splitting it at that area you know um so same again you know it's it's a good idea to either be splitting your wood or to be able to read the grain in the wood so another good example of selecting um you know some decent um grained material or all our reading the grain you know understanding the grain was actually today um one of the components or all are a few of the components of the cassette table that i'm making i've actually got to resaw the uh, some of the wood or buy some wood um i haven't bought at this time sometimes i do sometimes i don't um it's like six millimeter um in thickness um i was getting it from british hardwoods um in the uk 
I don't know what the price is um, right now, but the, the last time I looked, they just put the prices up ridiculous, and I can't even remember what it was like, but I just remember thinking to myself, I'm, there's no way on earth I'm paying that amount of money for free, <laughs> free six, free six millimeter thick pieces of wood. You know, I thought it was daylight robbery myself, um, which is quite sad because you know I have have bought a lot of material from British hardwoods in the past. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with that. The prices might have changed, um, you know, but the last time I looked, I wasn't amused. And so, today I was um, re doing some re and it's quite funny uh, because, obviously, when I first started re you know, I just kind of looked at the piece of the wood. Um, you know, I did have the sense at the time to make sure there was no knots in the wood. You know, if I was resawing a board um, in in half, you know, thickness-wise. Um, but obviously, as you learn, so today I was going through all of the pieces of wood um, that I had to hand that I was willing to resaw. Um, and on the edge um, of the wood, the end grain of the wood, obviously... Um, there was quite a lot of it that I had there, you know, I could, you know, see the, the rainbow, if you will, or the, or the um, you know, the curvature of of the wood, you know, the, basically the, the tree rings. Um, so, you know, today I was going through them and trying to find, um, you know, the straightest, um, you know, possible lines. I was looking for some quarter sewn, you know, sometimes I am lucky enough to get some quarter sewn um, boards. Um, you know, so I went through all me, I went through all me, um, me pieces, and unfortunately, I couldn't. Say, um, you know, I didn't have no quote I saw in there, so I just grabbed the straightest piece possible. So there is a reason behind this because obviously the more curvature uh, you've got on the end grain when you do, when you do saw this, um, you know. It will it will automatically um, start cutting, and it's a real pain in the bum. I mean, with it that sort of thickness, it's you can actually bend it back into place. Um, you know, not too much of an issue. You know, if you've you know if you've got to like glue something down. I mean, it's only six millimeters, but the problem with it is 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 actually playing in it because after you've resawn it. Um, you need to you need to plane at least one edge. Um, well, the way I do it anyway, because obviously when you're resawing it, that board is already finished. It's pre-finished when I bought the board, and I'm resawing it, so I'm going to have a rough sawn edge. And when you've got a rough sawn edge, it tends to typically um, bend in on the on the edge that's you know going to be rough. So this can be a pain, um, you know, kind of um, playing in it. <clears throat> and the way the way it's constructed, um, the table, you basically you you cutting components, you're shaping components, and then you're getting them into position and you're gluing them into position. There's quite a lot of components that happens too on these tables. Um, so sometimes it's just not feasible or viable, if you will. Uh, to glue it into place and then you know and then playing it um obviously with it being so thin it, it just can be problematic um so that's obviously i'm I'm digressing again i'm, I'm babbling a bit now but it, it, the point i want to make is that i went through all of the pieces of timber you know, that i had or the oak that i had you know and try to try to select the best possible piece um, you know, I didn't. I didn't actually saw all the way through. I didn't get all the resawing done today. Um, I didn't start started till late on. So I was actually still um, I was still resawing the board. Um, obviously there was two pieces of the same board I was doing. So you know that that was like two cuts. Um, you know on the thickness of of the board the board was like um what's a board um 170 millimeters um in width and the thickness is uh, 21 millimeters so i took six mil from one side and then i took six mil from the other side 
uh, and obviously I'm, I'm only after six mil six mil of um, you know thickness in the boards you know so it does actually take a little bit of time and as I said I didn't uh, start later on so I'm not overly sure how them boards are going to turn out if they're going to you know warp really bad uh, but that's another thing I mean even when you even when you're selecting boards if you've got like a board and you can see the rings in it you know that there's going to be a good chance you know they're going to they're going to warp I mean um, sorry cup uh, and that can be a, a nightmare for it I mean it's probably more predominant in um, in my experience anyway it's probably more predominant in the likes of spruce in the likes of pine um, so when I go and select um, pine now or, or European redwood um, I think out of all the pines and the you know the, the softwoods I do like the European redwood um, I love the smell of it it's it's absolutely great to work with um, so with that I do kind of take my time and I do you know tend to go through um, obviously I go through the boards with everything when I've got the opportunity but with the pine I do like take extra care I try to get the straightest green possible you know and I and I try not to get um, one where the where the rings are like too visible you know because obviously you know it just um it just cups and it's you know it's it can be a little bit disheartening <laughs> you know when you've you've kind of bought it you've paid for it and then you know depending on um how bad the cupping is i mean when you when you're there and you're selecting the boards i mean the ones that are really bad they like you know haven't got optimal um grain direction uh, you know on the end grain you, you they're normally starting a cup already you know so it's I suppose that's a good thing you can actually like you know give that that a wide berth if you will yeah I think I think that's uh, gonna be uh, me for the day I think I've <laughs> I think I really babbled on the day but uh, yeah so again thanks uh, thanks everyone for um, listening and watching the videos and following us and whatever else uh, to do with social media I really really appreciate it so, uh, thank you very much guys and until the next time I shall speak to you later